holding on to your tongues and singing at the same time? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Lord. He always shows us exactly where to go, right? Yes, if we just ask him, he'll tell us where to go. Sing, he leads me. And he leads me. show us exactly where to go. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Boys and girls, close your eyes, raise your hands. We want to ask the Lord to keep our mind stayed on Him and not focus on anything else. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. We're keeping our mind stayed on you. Let's sing about it. Keeping my mind stayed upon the Lord, my mind stayed upon the Lord. I'm keeping my mind stayed on the Lord, 
you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. He is so good. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. He has made me so worthy. Thank you, Father God. We worship you. Hallelujah. Sing that chorus. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him no soul is satisfied in him alone. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. 
Lord, we trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Boys and girls, it's so important that throughout your entire lives that you put your worth in Jesus. You put your worth in who he's called you to be because he has a plan for your life. Say, I know. You guys say it. Say, I know that he has a plan for my life and my worth is in him because he calls me worthy. Thank you, Lord. And he's going to help us. He's going to grow us every single day of our lives. He's going to make us stronger and better every, 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 every day. Did you know that? Yeah, he is. And he's going to help us to do the right things, to be respectful, to have strong faith. Right. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Say it one more time. Say, thank you, Lord, for all your help. Thank you, Lord. Boys and girls, you can have a seat, and we'll see you next time. The word of the day is humility. A heart full of humility is a heart full of respect. Hey, Hamlet! Hey, Look at that! What is it? I'm so excited. Two goodie bags. Wow. One is from me. This is mine. What a blessing! And this is for my friend Velvet. Oh. Yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what all is in here. Animal crackers. Oh, those are good. I've had those before. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. This is wow, really good. It's just so good full stuff. of good stuff. Oh, it is, but you know I might just look in my friend Velvet's bag and just see what oh. she whoa, has. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mabel, so Mabel. That's, that's being covetous. And the word speaks against being covetous. What is covetousness? Well, there's a scripture and I'm gonna read it to you. It's found in Luke 12, 15. It says, take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Hmm, so covetousness is me wanting her candy. Right, it's, it's wanting something that belongs to someone else. So I shouldn't do that. Right. Nope, I don't want no right. part of that covetousness. We, because we want to be doers of the word. That's right. right. So this is Velma's mm -hmm. candy. Right. And this is my candy. Yes. And you know what, Heather? Mm -hmm. Would you like to have some of my candy? Oh, you want to be a blessing to me? I do. I want to because share the, here. the Lord get, blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others, oh. right? Yes. And you oh. know what? You just pick out whatever oh. you want. Oh, chocolate. Chocolate is so good. Yay. Thank you. You're so Thank you. welcome. Hey, guys. It's confession time. Are you ready to do confessions? Okay, let's stand up and get ready. Ready? Repeat after me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Very good, that was great. Now get ready, are you ready to move a little bit? Here we go. I'm quick, I'm sharp, I'm bright, I'm good looking, very rich, and a major blessing. Great job. That was wonderful. Now get your doers out. Are you ready? You got them? Here we go. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the Word of God. Oh, great job. Do you guys believe that? Yes, I do too. Are we ready? One more confession. Do you have your Bibles? I'm going to give you just a little bit of time to go get your Bible. I have mine. So go get yours. Okay, good job. Do you have them? Ready? So let's raise our Bible up. And what do we say? This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can be what God says I can be. Great job, boys and girls. You did a wonderful job. It was good seeing you. See you next time. Good morning. 
I'm glad you're back. I'm just enjoying an orange glass of juice while I've been waiting. Let me fill in for those who haven't been with us. I'm Detective Durack. I'm an expert on respect. I've been on an assignment to identify the enemies of respect. Around here, we call them the five eyes of disrespect. And you are all my assistants. Our job is almost done. In the last few weeks, we have already identified four enemies of respect. Ignoring, interrupting, intruding, and interfering. Listen closely as we receive more information on the next enemy, insulting. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Miss Heather. Are you guys ready to learn with me? So I've heard that you guys have been learning about honor and respect and humility. Well, if we have a heart full of honor and respect and humility, then that means we're doers of the Word of God. We've also been learning about ignoring and interrupting, intruding and interfering, which are the five what? Yeah, they're the five enemies of respect. Great job. Well, let's go over each one and remind ourselves what they all mean. Okay, so the first one, ignoring. Do you remember what ignoring means? That means when someone is trying to talk to you and you act like you don't hear them. Yeah, okay, what's the second one? Hmm, yeah, interrupting, that's right. That means that if someone's talking and you have something to say, you cut them off and start speaking when you're supposed to wait till they're finished first. Yeah, okay, let's see, the third one, intruding, that's right. You never wanna to go to a party or go somewhere when you're not invited. You wanna always make sure you're invited first. Okay, number four is what? Yes, that's right, great job, interfering. Interfering is when, hmm, you're meddling into someone's business when it has nothing to do with you. You need to mind your own business, huh? Yeah. Well, we have one more we need to learn about, one final one, and that will make our five eyes of disrespect. And the fifth one is insulting. So we're gonna talk about insulting today, okay guys? Okay, go get your Bibles, because we need to read a verse. We're gonna turn to 2 Timothy 3, 2. Okay, are you ready? Here we go, read with me. People will be selfish and love money. They will brag and be arrogant and use abusive language. They will curse their parents and show no gratitude. They will have no respect for what is holy, and they will lack normal affection for their families. Oh my, insulting is when you, when you use abusive language. It hurts people. It's using bad words and being disrespectful to others. God doesn't want us to be disrespectful to others and use insulting language because he has created everyone specific for a purpose and specifically for a purpose and he loves each and every one of us so much and he wants us to love each other and be encouragers. He doesn't want us to be using bad and abusive language that insults people. There are some that could be using this insulting language to their parents. Ooh, the Lord is very clear in his word that we should honor our mother and father, that we should not be disrespecting our mom and dads. So if we're talking bad to our parents and being disrespectful and rude when they've asked us to do something, that is very serious to the Lord. And we wanna be doers of the word. We wanna have a heart full of respect for our parents, full of humility and full of honor because if we're loving God and we, we are being doers, then that's what we're doing toward our parents. Okay, I have another scripture for you guys, okay? Let's get your Bibles. We're gonna turn this time to Proverbs 12, 18. It says, sharp words cut like a sword. Wow. But words of wisdom heal. Wow, words are so important, boys and girls. If we're using insulting words and if we're using bad words, it can hurt people so badly. Like. It, it is worse than cutting them with a knife or a sword. That's what the word just said. So we don't, we don't wanna use insulting words. We don't wanna hurt people. That's not, God's, that's not our Father God's heart. We wanna use words that heal, that can bring healing to people's hearts. Um, 
when we have a heart full of humility and respect and honor, that's what's going to come out. It's going to be great, joyful, happy, encouraging words, and that's what we want. It's amazing, the power of words. We want to get rid of all of the insulting words, and we want to change what our heart is yielding to, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, words are also like containers. Containers can be filled with bad words, or containers can be full of good words. So let's look at, I have some containers here. Let's check them out. You want to? Okay. So we have this container and it's full of heavy rocks. These rocks are sharp, they're hard, and they could hurt if they were thrown at someone. Well, boys and girls, if we're using, in, using insulting words, that's what we're doing. It's like throwing rocks at people and hurting them. Those insulting words are full of evil, they're full of hate and cursing and death, and they're straight from Satan. And we never want to yield to the enemy and use insulting words. We, you would, we would never hear our sweet, loving Father God use words that would hurt like these rocks. Well, if we have a heart full of humility and our heart is full of honor and respect and we're doers of what the Lord has asked us to do, then our words are like these cotton balls. It doesn't matter how hard you throw them, they're always gonna be so gentle and kind and loving. Our words, full of love and humility and respect, they're gonna be soft, they're gonna be gentle. And that's what we want. We want our hearts to be full of faith, full of love, full of joy, grace, and peace. And God, He encourages us, He encourages us God enables us and he empowers us. So we want to yield to what our Father God wants us to do, and we want to be an encourager to others. So I want you to repeat after me. Say, I'm not a cursor. Good. Say, I'm not an insulter. Great job. Okay, say, I'm a blesser. That's right. Say, I'm an encourager. Great job, boys and girls. We're going to have Great words of humil humility, respect, and honor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Hey, guys. We just got our next lead. Come on, let's go. I'm excited to uh, wrap this investigation up. It's always been my dream to paint, and so I thought today was the day I decided to paint this horse. What do you think? Oh, girl, it may be your dream, but I do not believe that's your gift. That looks awful. Oh, Mick, you really think so, Mick? What? Why? Why do you think it, it looks awful? It does. It just, it looks terrible. It doesn't look anything at all like your example you have there. Oh, well, it's just my inspiration, but I guess it is a different color. Uh. I, it looks terrible. I think you should just quit. Oh. I just don't think this is your thing. Hey guys, did you recognize that enemy of respect? That's right, insulting. Excuse me, ladies. I'm Detective oh. Do-Right. Can I ask a few questions? Oh, sure. sure. Are you aware that you are insulting your friend and painting? Excuse me? Insulting? <laughs> Look at this. This is awful. It looks terrible. Your words are insulting and hurtful to your friend. It's like throwing stones. Hey, I've always been told just to tell it like it is and to tell the truth, and that is truth. This is awful. You're not, you not being sensitive to your friend and your truth telling. It's a direct violation of respect. I'm gonna have to take you down to the office with me, or if you'd like to try this again in a respectful way. Yes, I'm sorry, Megan. I think I would like to try again. Hey Megan, what you doing? Oh, hey Mabel. Well, I, it's always been my dream to paint, and so I decided today was the day. I'm just gonna paint this horse. I just got my paint, my brush, and I'm gonna paint it up. Wow, you are off to a great start. Thanks so much. I'm still learning, but I think I'm gonna get the hang of this really soon. <laughs> I've always liked horses. Maybe I could take some paint less, painting lessons too. Oh, ooh, call me. I'll go with you. That'd be great. Awesome. Much better. Great job. Kids, be on the lookout for this enemy of respect in your own lives. Insulting. Oh, I got it. Okay. This one here. Pull that back right 
Hey, hey, how we doing? <laughs> Whoa, what did you Oh, Jimmy! Whoa! I almost shot you! You've got armed and dangerous up in here. What's going on? <laughs> well, I'm just practicing shooting these ducks off of this box. What do those ducks do to you? <laughs> oh, it's just a game. Prepare for some kind of duck attack? What's going on? <laughs> No, there's a carnival this weekend, and there's a duck shooting game, and I want to be ready so that I can win a big fuzzy monkey toy. <laughs> All right. Is that exciting? <laughs> well, maybe you need to be a little more careful, because if I wasn't headed to a bring your own pizza pan pizza party, who knows what would have happened a BYOP party. There. <sighs> that is Put a good that point. Down there. I could have shot you. Yeah, but uh, uh, fortunately, I was able to deflect it with relative ease. <laughs> Deflect. Huh. Deflect. That's a big word. What does that mean? That means you alter or bend something away from its true course. <laughs> like that dart was headed straight from between my eyes. <laughs> and I took that pizza pan and I was like, Pachee! and there it goes. <laughs> I am a pretty good shot. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe focus on the ducks. That is a good point. That is the game. But um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't shoot you. I'm glad I was Yeah, me too. To, you were able to... Deflect. That's Trusty up. Rusty right here. Huh. Yeah. It's not it's... Rusty, I just call it that. So it's not sanitary. You... Food products. Well, can you explain to me a little bit more what deflect means? Like, give me an example. Well, uh, there was the uh, dart to the face that was that. Oh, wait, oh, oh, I know, I know, I know. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Yeah, we were just talking about it a couple weeks ago. You know, we've been talking about respect and those five eyes interruptings and the ignorance, all of those. Well, remember, after Adam, he ate that fruit. He wasn't supposed to eat that fruit, but he ate that fruit. And then God comes into the garden. He's like, Adam, Adam. That's not what God sounds like. I, I, I don't really know. I'm just, I'm just going for it. You know? okay. So, so he comes in, Adam, and I like that one that was better. better. <laughs> like that. And Adam comes out. And he's like, Here I am. And he's like, You ate the fruit. And Adam's like, eh. It was that girl. She did it. She made me do it. It's her fault. That woman. He blamed Eve? He blamed Eve. He deflected. Oh, so he... See, the Lord was looking at him because he did wrong, you know? Mm. He ate the fruit he wasn't supposed to, and then he tried to deflect that. He mm. tried to take the Lord's anger and direct it towards Eve instead. Um, that's... that's not good. Um, so, say for instance there was this, um, girl about my age, um... Okay. And um, say that she was at school and she was texting in class and she got caught by the teacher and the teacher asked uh -oh. her if she was texting and she said, <gasps> well, my friend texted me first. Would that be deflecting? Just yep. curious. Just curious. That's yeah, whoever that was, <laughs> they should know that's yeah. really disrespectful to do that. Who, whoever that might be. <laughs> It was me. <gasps> Kim, were you deflecting again? Uh, well, I didn't know that deflecting was being disrespectful. Of course it's being disrespectful. It's a form of dishonesty. It's trying to take the truth and turn it against somebody else instead of having a... Not only is that not walking in love, it's disrespectful to the person who's talking to you. Uh, well, I don't want to be... I don't want to be like that. No. But, what should I do? Well, you know, it might be a good idea for you to go back to that teacher and you to apologize for being disrespectful, for deflecting, and say, that was me, I did it, I take responsibility for texting in class. But that's embarrassing. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Sometimes when you do the wrong thing and you have to go to apologize, well, you can feel all sorts of feelings in your flesh, but in the end, in the end, if you do the right thing, well, your relationships will be in such a better place and people will see that respect in you and they will appreciate it. Well, I definitely don't want to be disrespectful and mm -mm. I know it's good to be humble, so I guess I'll go back to my teacher tomorrow and tell her that I was texting in class and take the responsibility for it and not deflect to my friend. Yeah, and you know what, that would show that you have a heart of humility. Well, I definitely want to have a heart of humility. That's right. A heart of humility is one that's soft towards God. God can speak to you more clearly, and he'll more readily use you for his plans. Oh, 
Well, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think you ought to do that. That is a great idea. I wish I'd thought of it. <laughs> and uh, I am going to be, maybe I ought to carry one of these pizza pans with me everywhere. You never know when somebody's going to be flinging around darts. Well, when you come around me, that's a good idea. Well, um, could I come to that uh, party with you? Oh, sure. You like pizza? Oh, yeah, I like pizza. With the pineapples and the anchovies, and I like to get some peppers in there, and black olives, and then some salami, maybe. And uh, you know what? They got these banana peppers. They're so, so good. That's not the kind of pizza I like, but... They probably got some pepperoni. Oh, I'll eat that. <laughs> All right, let's go. Oh, hi, boys and girls. Oh, I was actually just writing a thank you note to Detective do -Right. He has been so helpful in helping us to identify those enemies of respect. I just really wanted him to know how thankful I was for all of his expertise and all of his help. You know, and speaking of Detective do -Right, he speaks so highly of you and so kindly in saying that you all did an awesome job of helping him to identify those enemies. Now, boys and girls, we know the enemies. There were five enemies of respect. So where do we go? What do we do now that we know that? Do we just sit at home and say, I know the five enemies? Nope. We need to be doers of the Word of God. Now that we know what the Word says, we want to be doers. And the Word says that when we show honor to God, that He will show honor to us. So when we are being a doer of God's Word, we have a choice every day. We can walk out of our house and we can say, I'm going to be a doer of God's Word. When you do that, you are being a witness of God and what His Word says. So if you think about it, let's just think about it for a second here. Let's say that you are an expert at identifying those enemies. You leave your house and you go out and you're like, oh, I identified an enemy of respect. You have a choice. Your choice is to either join in with disrespect or to, uh, to walk the path of respect like God has asked you to do. Yes, that's right, so here's your choice. And we want to choose what God has asked us to do. I want to show you in the Bible what it says about being a witness. All right, in Ephesians chapter six, verses two, it says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment and promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Now, boys and girls, that verse might not have the word witness in it, but that's what I want to talk to you about. When you honor your father and your mother, that is a witness to your, your mom and your dad in showing them that you are showing respect. And boys and girls, when we show them honor, God shows us honor, and it is His good pleasure to show you honor. When we listen to our moms and we don't interrupt them, when we obey our dads when they ask us to do something, you are being a witness of the good that God is putting in your heart. You're being a doer of the Word of God. And that is exactly where we want to be and what we want to do. When you go to school, boys and girls, and your teacher is talking, you have a choice. You have a choice to choose respect and be a doer, or you have the choice to yield to disrespect. And we want to practice yielding to respect and following God and what He has said. And I know that you are a doer of the Word and you will do it because now you know what it says and you will be able to go out and do it. This has been so exciting and so much fun. So I'm gonna go finish up my letter and get it in the mail to Detective do -Right because I am so thankful for him and I am especially thankful for you. Hi kids, I wanna point something out that you may have noticed. As we spotted each of the eyes of disrespect and then enforced the correct way to respect, to show respect, did you notice something? When we are respectful, we are being witnesses for the Lord. When other people see you, stop and wait to speak to someone else that is talking or stay out of others' business or wait to be invited. They are seeing respect in your life and that honors God. 
They see God in you. That is being a witness, and that pleases God. Now be on the lookout for the five enemies of respect in your own life. Recover respect in everything you do, and you will be a light for the Lord. Faith, life, kids are respectful. Confess this with me, guys. I am respectful. Good job. Hey, boys and girls, wow. Has this not been action-packed fun? We have been learning all about the enemies of respect, and you guys have done an amazing job of helping Detective do right. And boys and girls, now that we know how to identify the enemies of respect in our own lives, you know what is really fun? Is when you start recognizing respect all around you. When you notice someone doing something respectful for somebody else, you wanna go up to them and say, hey, here's a badge for you. I saw you, I caught you showing respect, or I saw you showing respect. Now boys and girls, we have talked about not identifying disrespect in other people's hearts. That's not our job. Our job is to identify it in our own lives, change it, and to honor God. But boys and girls, what an honor it is to know respect, to see it around us, and to applaud someone and say, good job. Here's a medal of respect for you. Boys and girls, how fun would that be? Well, it will be super fun once you have a badge to give someone. Would you like to know how to make a badge? All right, I will show you. What you're gonna need is some paper. Now, today, Miss Megan has decided to use red paper, white paper, and yellow paper. But as always, you can make your badge look exactly like what you want it to look like. All right, so let me show you how to make this. You're gonna need, look here, I used red. And so all I did was trace my badge shape on here. This is what I wanted my badge to look like. So I'm gonna cut this little guy out here. Now, boys and girls, have you had so much fun with Detective Do-Right? Wow, he was really fun to help. And you know what? A lot of those things that he taught us and helped us to identify are things that I get to work on every day. Boys and girls, when we learn what something is and we want to do better or change it, that takes a heart of humility. When you have a humble heart, you can recognize that, hey, I'm not always right. That's something I need to change. And if I find myself interrupting someone or interfering or insulting, that's something that I want to quickly change in my own heart. And that is being humble. That's having humility. Here's your badge. Okay, moving on. There's your badge. That's the shape of my badge. All it is is a kind of like a square with a triangle at the bottom. All right, so look here. Now we're actually gonna put a white line. I thought that white line just made it seem so official. So look here. I have a white line. Now, boys and girls, this is the same shape as my background badge. That's pretty important because we want it to fit on there. All right, let's get this cut out and we're gonna glue it on there. Now, boys and girls, when we are walking around and we see somebody have respect for somebody else, maybe they gave their seat to an elderly person. That would be good. And if you see that, do you know what that makes you? That makes you a witness, a witness of respect. And that is something that is good. All right, look here. Now I can take my white official stripe and I'm gonna glue it on there. I just thought that white stripe made it seem so official. Let's get that on there. All right. Now if you would like to, if your mom lets you, you can get a safety pin with your mom's permission and you can put that on the back of it and you can pin it on. Or you're welcome to put a string on it. You can put a string around it and you can hang it like a necklace on someone. That's kind of fun. All right, what are we missing? Our star. Well, it's a good thing a while back Miss Megan showed you how to draw a star. Did some of you forget? That's all right. I'll show you how to draw one. 
You're gonna need, I used a yellow piece of paper because I felt like a star was yellow. All right, let Miss Megan show you how to make one. You are going to make this. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see it. It looks like the letter A, like that. That's it. Next step. Now, we're gonna take the bottom part of our letter A and we're gonna go whoop. Did you see that? I went whoop. Okay. Now, let's see. We're gonna take this and we're gonna go straight across. One line across. And then I'm just gonna connect these two and you have a star. I will give you a hint, boys and girls. If your mom has a star cookie cutter, that is a great outline to follow. You just put the cookie cutter on there, use your pencil and trace it which that also helps with any shape. Stars can be a little tricky to draw. Now I want to encourage you not to be discouraged if your star doesn't look perfect the first time. You just keep trying or use the star that you have and it will be great. Now I'm gonna cut out my star and we're gonna glue it on. Boys and girls, it is such an honor to serve God. You know, and it's an honor to know what he expects of us. God tells us in his word exactly what he expects of us. And that is so comforting to believers, for God's children to know what he expects from us. Here's our star. I'm gonna put this on here, look here. How fun. Now you can write anything on your badge that you would like to write. I have not written anything on mine today, but you can write on yours. They, oh, you know what? I'm gonna put the little tip at the bottom down here. Oh, Miss Megan's star is a little wonky. Look, it's a little different than my other one. That's okay, that's no problem. Now you can also make up several of these and just have them on hand. Boys and girls, when you identify somebody, you are a witness of respect around you. It's a lot of fun to show honor to someone and say, good job, here's a badge. Boys and girls, I hope you have so much fun making your badge. Hey guys, that was a great time, wasn't it? But before we leave, I'd like to ask you if you'd like to make Jesus your savior. So everybody that would like to, let's bow our heads, repeat after me, Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died on the cross, and you raised him on the third day. Jesus, I ask you into my life, and I thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Man, that's the greatest gift we could receive in our whole life, guys. I can't wait to see you next time. Until then, carry on. Okay, guys, how many times did you see the word of the day? That's right. Okay, so I want all of you to be on the lookout on ways that you can show respect. And I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.